but they're not all necessarily opportunists. You know, there's people out there who just are like, I'm angry. I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> That's right. You know? And, and I, you know? Play it. Play it. You know, I did just watch that movie, Network, not too long ago. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good movie. <laughs> where, where is the network? Where, where is the Pro Bowl? Where's the, where's the clip? Oh, do I have it in here? Yeah. Someone loaded it in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone loaded it in. The mad as hell. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. Um, uh, well, I'm gonna bring in 501. Has their hand up too? That's. I think that's Vince. I hope it is. Is that you, Vince? It is Vince. Hey, how y'all Long. doing? Good evening. Long time no speak, good, man. How good. you doing? Oh, man, you guys are always doing great stuff, man. I'm proud to be able to call in. Aw. Well, we're happy to thanks. have you. Yeah, Hi, thanks, for, thanks for pr- promoting us, hon. Oh, you bet. I, you know, uh, you guys are great, man. You guys got a great coalition, and I'm proud to be a little part of it myself. <coughs> and uh, I, You guys, are, of course, you know, are always, always welcome to uh, share some of my page, and I'm proud that you do. Aww. Kind of my my little motto is connecting voices is my sub name up there and I, I was telling a I was telling an old boy today that's a long story anyways uh, um, you know I don't I don't I'm not no nobody great I, I don't think that I'm some great voice on the radio or, or any you know great revelations but uh, I am part of something great and uh, you know we all are in this together and, and it's our it's our duty really I believe it's our duty to be able to disseminate this information out here uh, because everybody that gets everything from the mainstream is so it's so convoluted and it's very confusing and and most people think that they're they have their own ideas where in fact that this what most people believe has been passed down to them either you know through tradition or family or religion and as opposed to being free thinkers and, and you know a person's going to be insulted if you just come out and tell them stuff like this but we, we need to be able to do it in a way where we're not running people off and don't seem so opinionated, you know, like we got all the answers, but, uh, you know, just have a discussion. And I, I'd like to – now, first of all, I'd like to compare this. I, I'm just going to premise this. I, I'm going to con- compare Ferguson to uh, uh, Bunkerville with the Bundys, and uh, th- I don't think there is any. And so I've seen a post that said, uh, you know – Oh, it, it was from uh, from one of Bundy's family members out there. But anyway, they're comparing, you know, domestic terrorists, those of us that was there in, in Bunkerville, uh, to mm-hmm. peace, so-called peaceful protesters in Ferguson. Now, listen, I, I know that a lot of people, even though they don't know everything about the hows and all that, that, that we, we know about the corporatocracy, just to keep that part short, um, but everybody's frustrated. They, they realize things aren't right, and you know, not all cops are bad. But you know, there is a problem with uh, some killer cops, and um, you know, that's going even into a further subject about how they're hiring cops. You know, in base, most major cities with the lower IQ. The but boys in blue with the low IQ. Huh? Right. I, you know, I've got family in law enforcement. Now, I'll, I'll just go ahead and add this little story. I was out today, and. Uh, uh, I work with a, a bondsman, and uh, he's got a farm and a dozer server, so, you know, I'm kind of multi. Uh, what what I do, a lot of different stuff. So, But anyways, this old boy, he's been given a chance to. He uh, uh, he ain't been, you know, making any payments on his bond. So, anyways, we went over there, and it's like, man, the guy, he's just making excuses. And, and uh, so, so Kenny said, go get, you, go get them handcuffs. So I went and got them. I handed, it, handed them to him. I told him. And I told his wife, I said, come on, I want to talk to you. And I told her, I said, what you need to do is go over there and tell him quit making excuses and give something affirmative, you know. So anyways, long story short, uh, we took them both to jail because they both were on bond. But uh, I went to bat for them, and, and uh, we went ahead and let them go and, and come up with an arrangement. So they didn't go to jail. I'm not law enforcement. I'm not working in the capacity of law. But, you know, when people are buying into the system, like Hal Anthony uh, behind the woodshed, we've got to find a way to withdraw from this in noncompliance. And anybody that is in favor of an armed revolution in the streets 
has not ha, uh, does not have an inkling or understanding of any any history is a very very bad idea. But I understand the frustration. But uh, this is rioting and looting. It, this is not anarchy, like you said, Austin. This is not anarchy. People don't understand. That's what people think anarchy is: is mm-hmm. rioting and looting. Right. This is. Go ahead. No, I was going to say this. This is tyranny, not anarchy, what's going on. That's right. That's what you said. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. right people don't mix. understand. I've, I've said God's an anarchist. You know, he gave, uh, in my opinion, God gives us, uh, you know, the ability of free will for self-determination. And that don't mean, like what the devil would say, is, you know, you go do whatever you want to. You, you do whatever you want to when you don't infringe upon it. If you're not causing harm, that that's what violation of the law is and we've had you know society has incorporated uh, codes and statutes and all this stuff and and people uh you know just assume or are frightened at the point of the gun rightfully so into compliance but you know it, it comes time for people to start uh taking a stand with non-compliance and that doesn't mean going out and robbing stores busting windows setting mm-hmm. stuff on fire shooting at cops you know uh, we hey, don't hey, want to hey. alienate the, you know, I want to. I want to approach that. I want to approach that. I I That's do lead. believe that there's agent provocateurs that are Absolutely. that are really doing this. I mean, look at look at all the the whole row of cars on fire for the photo op. All these fires started at the same time. We got no news news footage of the fires starting, but we got them all blazing. Mm-hmm. There you go. And here's the here's another thing. Well, I have to agree with each and everybody here on the uh, roundtable tonight that burning down private businesses or and here's where I'll disagree with Lisa a little bit. Even burning down the friggin Walmart kids is not where you need to be focusing your anger. Did Walmart uh, not choose to not indict this guy? Did uh, the little gas station or the McDonald's? Well, I no, wait a minute. Burn down the McDonald's. Never mind. Forget I said that. Or did the liquor ah. store owner uh, t- have anything to do with this in, uh, indictment not going through? No. It's the what? city buildings. If you want to destroy some, destroy the city buildings. Destroy the uh, city hall. Destroy the mayor's office. Destroy the police station. Destroy that shit if you really need to destroy something. By I all means, you know, why are we? I wasn't promoting looting Walmart. I'm just saying. You know, I know, it's, I know, it's, I know it's, it's counter. Saying. It's counterproductive to to raid the small mom and pop businesses because those are the those mm-hmm. are their neighbors, you know. That's right. Versus the big corporations, it, or like you say, uh, you know, city hall or the police stations and stuff like that. Which again, I'm not promoting that, but I'm I just am. saying if 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 they're well, <laughs> if they're, I pull no punches you know, about kind of, this uh, anymore, man. I'd I, like if, to give you. A People are going like to get mad. I'd like to give you a quote from Martin Luther King. Go ahead. He says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Hate multiplies hate. Violence multiplies violence. And toughness multiplies toughness. In the descending spiral of destruction, he says, the chain reaction of evil, hate begets hate. Wars produce more wars. And this must be broken or we shall be plunged into a dark abyss of annihilation. And I, I just think that uh, anybody that thinks that, that we can change anything with the propagation of, of more of the same, they're, they're missing a serious lesson here. Um, it, it, to, to go with the same system, you know, we're missing the point. What we need to do is realize where the system has failed and seek to change that, and you can't do it with uh, at the point of a gun, um, so I say non-compliance in in uh, things that are not lawful and legal is not lawful, and you know you're going to have to take a stand each and every one of us, and we have a like I said a duty and obligation to educate uh, our brothers and sisters and you know amongst us around us and and, uh, and across the world and you know thank goodness for social media. Uh, I I discovered internet radio in uh, 2010 and. And met uh, James Freeland, um, who got me into radio, and they, I'm like, wow, here we are, 20 years later, and we're talking about stuff now that, you know, we can only do basically face to face. 
uh, Ralph Epperson wrote The Unseen Hand. I, I've seen a, a 20 some odd hour uh, presentation that he gave on uh, the secrets of history. And, you know, I come to realize things ain't right. And of course, you know, my, my opinions are, and understandings are changing as time goes by, and, that, and that's natural. Anybody that's stuck in, that believes the same thing they did 10, 10 years ago, man, you know, you're, you're, not, uh, you're not moving forward. So, right. Well, exactly. That, I mean, I mean, <laughs> well, so, some people are not moving forward. Some people are stuck in status land. And, um, <laughs> it's like we live with just, a bunch of ostriches, you know. I was, just, doing I, was just, I was just looking at, at, at what people were saying about this. Um, one, one person said the nigger got what he deserved. And, Oh, I mean, this is, yeah. <laughs> Are we really past right. that? I mean, when I when I was growing up, my mom and dad taught me one thing: the word "nigger" means an ignorant person. I don't care if you're black, white, yellow, purple, with polka dots, or even green and multicolored hair. It doesn't matter. If you're an idiot, you're an idiot. You know, you have it's ignorant okay. remedy with, that. Ignorant means not knowing, and we're all niggers in one way or another. So, uh, oh, and you up. can't own a word. I've said this before. You can't be offended because I'm white and I say that. Man, I've been in the life, dude. I was in the game, you know, out there on the streets in Vegas. Uh, so, man, I'm qualified as a for real nigga, and that's for sure. So, yeah. hey, don't get mad at me because I'm white and say it. And, you know, just because I talk like a hillbilly don't mean that, uh, you know, I ain't been, to, uh, been out there in the world because I have. Uh, I've got to post my cousin's a husband posted in, from Las Vegas in response uh, Mad Mardigan who was uh, in Bunkerville he came out there as an, an anonymous and you know man talk about provocateurs they come in there and split that movement up we had a genuine uh, revolution there that turned into a civil uh, war but hey God bless the Bundy oh. I, I'm behind him all the way and I know you are too. Oh, right? you, oh, 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 you mean, you mean, you mean when, when Pete Sanchilli and Adam Syops Kokesh had, had a had a little discourse and a little discussion on, on um, Adam's show, but nobody else could make a phone call. Huh. Now I was yeah. there when uh, yeah, I, actually I Vince no, talked with I me no, uh, while he was ahead, there. I'm sorry, uh, Vince, you actually did call into the date night with the Constitution show. And we did a, a whole broadcast with you from uh, the Bundy Ranch, man. It was awesome. Yeah, I yeah, called. Uh, Vince. We had a few broadcasts from there. Uh, some on YouTube, right. Y.TV. TV. Uh, yeah, I'm Vince proud. called you our show. I'm, I'm proud as punch to be part of this. You know. I yes, really you should am. be. Yeah, I mean, you did yeah. something right. You guys were out there being a, a, an example of what being a true American was. All right. You, you stood yep. up together. You said, you know what? No, you guys can't come in here and do this crap. We're not going to take this. This is this guy's land. And if you want to you know, fight with him, then you're going to fight with all the rest of us. And that's what we really needed to do. And, you, and that's why I continue to applaud all the patriots, and, and yes, I call them patriots, who went out there to uh, Bundy Ranch and, and made a stand. We could have done the same thing in Ferguson. It could have happened there. Now we're looking at uh, riots going to be coming up not only in New York and Los Angeles and San Diego, but also especially coming up in Cleveland, especially after they just released that video tonight of uh, uh, yeah. or today, rather, yeah, they uh, just, them gunning yeah, they down just that shot, shit. They just shot a 12-year-old kid. Cold Two blood. seconds I after they got out of the car. Two you know seconds what? after as they got out of the car. This, as far as this brown fella, I'm, I'm sorry, man, but – you're putting your money on the wrong horse if you're backing him up for for the revolution. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, now I, I've seen the, the the cop that that shot him, and I heard what he had to say. And you know, personally, I I spent a lot of time in uh, studying uh, you know personal psychology when people are lying, uh, their body language and mannerism and, and words. Oh, he was all words, full of lies. Words. That cop, that young boy right there that caught, shot him. I, I believe he is honest and sincere, and I believe that uh, he was defending no, he his wasn't. life. No, I, I believe he that. was lying. I, he was lying. He was lying, as far as I can tell. 
I don't no, think I, he was. I, I can very much tell you he was lying through his teeth because the story changed five times before he ever went to uh, illegally uh, testify to the grand jury. And then it, it was still alive when I saw his video with uh, his interview with Stephanopoulos. Uh, you could see now when you're looking at body language, especially with people trying to tell a story. It, once a person you know starts looking over to their left, that means they're trying to recall memory. Once they start looking yep. to the right, they're trying to break stuff up. You could watch him this look. Is not, both, these aren't hard both on, rules, though. Sometimes on, you're looking to either right. Way. You're, you're, you're contemplating what you're going to say, and you're thinking about the re, re, uh, repercussions of what you're going to say. So, you know, I may be mistaken. I don't, uh, you know, claim to be an expert, but, you know. Well, Vince, Vince and, 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 and what rightfully cast, so. You know, the black Vince, folks in, in the black neighborhoods are uh, under, you know, more of a police state than most in, anywhere else, of course. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, when Johnson, you know, the war, so called war on poverty, we know every time there's a war on something, you know, shit gets worse. But, you know, they, they, created, uh, they created a subculture uh, in the African American community. They, you know, depleted natural, well, I don't know, I'm just going to say the the ability for for a black man to uh think for himself be a family man to you know to uh produce and and earn a living and i'm using these words that i don't really like to use but I, i'm just gonna go ahead and use them but anyways um you know the, the black man's a shackled runner to start with okay and, and uh as far as the economy and so forth the government is not there to provide jobs or to create jobs if they'd get the hell out of the way you know well, the whole economy would take off if they would, if if people were impeded from, uh, you know, going out, going out and doing it as they would to, uh, you know, procure things in life, and, and uh, you know, without stealing, of course, and stuff. But um, mm -hmm. the black man is disadvantaged now. The black folks, rightfully so, are are, you know, they want to, well, they want this crap to stop, you know. Uh, you know, I, I heard somebody say years ago, there ain't no black folks going down with airplanes bringing. Uh, cocaine in from South America, you know. This is the mm -hmm. same old game since back in the British Empire days with opium, you know. And mm -hmm. now, now we're right. the we're the continuation, and we're protecting the opium fields in Afghanistan, you know, funding black ops through the CIA. You know, they they uh, they had a big, you know, everybody was on these oxy cottons and stuff, and then now they restrict the supply. Now the people are going to go to heroin. You know, they, you got to build your customer base, and uh, you know, if I was a black man in in the ghetto. Uh, and I was at one time in out in Vegas, you know. I was out there in the, in the game, and it was the hardest job I ever had in my life. But you're absolutely so, right. I've grown up a poor, uh, long-haired, hippie-looking dude. So, you know, I, I grew up in the ghettos. A lot of my friends were black and, and things like that, which is really kind of weird. I get a lot of weird looks, as we'd all would, especially, you know. Uh, a one token white guy with a beard and long hair walking around with all these black uh, gangster looking guys but no these guys were all my friends from when we were kids we all grew up they don't go out and thugging and robbing and well some of us used to you know back in the day i mean I, shit i wasn't no angel all my life i'll tell you that but it this is not where our, 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 our systemic racism comes from in this country, man. It keeps getting pushed no. more and more by the oppression of the state and the division of the media. Racism, yeah. racism is a conditioned and taught. You can take a black kid, an Indian kid, a white kid, and a Native American kid and an Eskimo. You could put all five of them. All little babies, all little kids, you can put all five of them in a sandbox, and, and, and they're not going to segregate themselves. They're going to be hugging each other and playing with mm -hmm. each other and cooperating with each other. It's all right. conditioned. It's all programmed. Racism is, is taught. You're not born with it. It's a That's taught right. thing. And kids, you know, out there with new kids that are raising kids and stuff, by all means, Teach your children this because if you leave it to the television or you leave it to the damn schools or the friggin' government for that matter, they're going to grow up full of hate. They are. My son-in-law is black. I mean charcoal black. When he gets out of the car, the oil light comes on. I love him to death. <laughs> he is father of my two beautiful granddaughters. And this is what I taught my children. A black man is no different than us. 
I said, hey, when I would bring my friends over to the house and, and you know, they're black and the kids were first around, they're you know, kind of, you know, a little bit sketchy because, well, they had never seen a black guy and stuff. And this is when they were real young. And they, they would ask me, why is he that color? And I was like, because he is. I was like, guess what? If you cut off his arm and you cut off my arm, the same thing's going to be on the inside. I'm like, that's always really stuck with my kids. And that's what I, I really try to uh, teach them the, the most. We're all people. This is what bothers me about these uh, uh, radio show hosts and TV uh, people. You know, oh, we're, everybody has a right, and everybody has a right, and everybody has a right until you decide that they're just animals. Oh, really? Right. Just yeah. animals. Well, Instantly. Well, I got something. I got something ready to roll. That per Lisa's request. Are you ready? Okay. Hey, I'm Are gonna jump ready, out, Lisa? guys. I just wanted to. I just wanted to add in. I appreciate you, Lisa, uh, Austin, y'all are rock. And is this Lee on? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's Lee. Lee, right on, brother. Right on, man. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna hang up and I'm gonna tune back in here on the radio and listen to y'all for the rest of the show. Love y'all. Keep up the keep up the real fight and let's keep this shit straight. And and listen, if we don't agree, it don't matter because you know we, we all have different opinions and that comes from our perspective. And if, if we was all standing around a different part of a building, we'd describe it differently. So it don't matter if we have a difference of opinion. It, it just right. matters that we work towards what is right and good. And mm -hmm. if uh, and if that if what you're doing harms nobody else, then it's nobody else's business. But we need to uh, we need to work at correcting this world. And we have the first time in in history we have the chance of doing that, where we as a people can communicate uh, through social media. And you know what? Let's work through the bullshit, right? Let's uh, let's make this world what it's yeah. supposed to be. That's so, right. I get to love speak, could, couldn't say that any better, man. Thanks, Vince, man. Much love, man. I hope to talk to you again soon. Thank we you. Will. All right, Vince. Later. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.